He loved music and nightlife. He was a good singer and a good dancer, a Casanova with a fun-loving personality, who often clashed with authority, and always had a knack for finding trouble. If he'd have been born a hundred years later, maybe he'd have been a rock and roll frontman. But what did Billy the Kid do in his life to gain that Wild West rock star reputation? We're going to kick off with the story of his most daring escape, an event that serves as the catalyst for his infamy, and made his alias a household name across 19th century America. The real-life events that transpired at New Mexico's Lincoln County Courthouse on April 28, 1881, play out like a scene in a Tarantino film. So, after this really cool intro theme, let's dive straight into that topic. Welcome to Loose Cannon TV. After standing trial in a place called Messia for the murder of Sheriff William Brady, a young prisoner going by the name of William H. Bonney, alias Billy the Kid, was transported by Pat Garrett and his deputies back to Lincoln County where the killing had taken place. After already being sentenced to death, Billy was housed in a cell on the second floor of the Lincoln County Courthouse to await his hanging. Assigned with the duties of guarding him were two lawmen by the name of Jim Bell and Bob Ollinger. Ollinger had made it his mission to antagonise and bully the outlaw at every turn. Bell, on the other hand, treated Billy with respect and carried out his duties without malice. To separate Billy from the other prisoners, Bob Ollinger had moved them to a hotel across the street, leaving Bell as Billy's only guard. This was his best chance to try something. If he was going to make a break for it, now was the time. He told Bell that he needed to use the privy outside and asked permission to be escorted there. Bell unlocked the cell door and proceeded to march Billy down the narrow staircase and out the back door of the courthouse. With his prisoner's arms in handcuffs and his legs fastened securely in iron shackles, Bell most likely wasn't expecting to be the victim of such a quick and efficient melee. Billy has been described as many things over the years, but Stocky has never been one of them. The 21-year-old was rake-thin, with narrow shoulders, and his hands and wrists were small enough to free himself from handcuffs with relative ease. The pair made their way back into the building, and began to climb the narrow staircase. Billy obviously would have been walking ahead so that Bell could keep an eye on him, but at some point on the stairs, Billy slipped one hand out of his cuffs, allegedly using them as a weapon and swinging them in Bell's direction. No matter what the details of the struggle were, Billy got the better of Jim, and managed to grab the lawman's gun from his holster. With deep remorse, the kid shot Bell in the torso at the bottom of the staircase, and the building still bears the scars from the incident to this very day. Bell staggered back out the door they'd just come in from, and died in the arms of a gardener who was working in an adjacent yard. If Billy had wanted to kill Jim Bell, he wouldn't even have made it outside. He would have been killed outright in the staircase. But what was done was done, and the adrenaline pumping through Billy in this moment would have been insane. He made his way from the top of the staircase to the gun armory on the second floor, in the very same room as the jail cell he'd been languishing in just minutes ago. Knowing full well that Ollinger would be rushing back to the courthouse any second having heard the gunshots, Billy strategically positioned himself in a window on the east side of the building, which faced the nearby hotel. As Bob Ollinger approached, Billy said something to his enemy before shooting to kill. The sheriff, who had previously delighted in tormenting and ridiculing Billy, had been killed by his very own gun. It's said that once he was outside the courthouse, Billy threw Ollinger's gun directly at his body while making some understandably rude remarks about the dead man's character. With his heart surely still racing, the young outlaw shifted and shuffled as fast as his leg irons would allow him, straight towards the local town in order to address the citizens of Lincoln County. 
Now you might be thinking, that's an extremely bold move after what's just happened. But he couldn't exactly just get on a horse and leave before freeing himself from his shackles. And he also had a fair bit of explaining to do if he wanted to leave Lincoln County alive. Sorry, I've just got to get off my chest. That was a bit like in Goodfellas when, uh, that's when I knew I'd never be coming back from Florida alive. Billy ripped into an explanatory rant, like a street corner soapbox politician, railing against the injustices that had led to his predicament. With the only local law enforcement officials all dead, Billy is rumoured to have held court for as long as an hour, telling the people of Lincoln County that he had not wanted to kill Jim Bell, showing a visible sense of remorse and explaining that he had no other choice if he wanted to survive. After his captivating speech, one of Billy's many supporters helped him remove his iron shackles, and Billy was able to escape on horseback. But what led up to the events on that day? What were Billy's motives for killing Sheriff William Brady in the first place? Join us on Loose Cannon TV as we unravel the events that sparked the fire that became the Lincoln County War. What happened in that war? And of course, we'll reopen the case of Brushy Bill Roberts. See you next time, and if you like the video and you like the way I tell stories, hit the subscribe button and join the Loose Cannon TV community.